So you're thinking about buying the most powerful MacBook Pro on the market. Stop right there. Let me tell you how I've spent 3,600 euros on the M3 Max MacBook Pro and now it's just sitting in my drawer. Let's talk about whether you actually need this machine or if you're about to commit a tech overkill. All right, so here's the backstory. It was January 2024. The new M3 Max MacBook Pro just dropped and I was like, let's do this. You know, fully hyped by all the reviews telling me that it's gonna be a game changer. I threw down 3,600 euros telling myself that this is an investment. Fast forward to today and I'm editing on a completely different laptop. Let me explain you how that actually happened. For the most of 2024, my shiny M3 Max was my go-to editing machine. DaVinci Resolve, handled it beautifully. Smooth playback, fast rendering, no drama. Then in September, my editing workflow shifted to Premiere Pro because surprise, that's the industry standard. Thanks, Agency Life. Premiere Pro works like a dream on a MacBook, no complaints. And I added everything off a Samsung T9 SSD, which is super fast and makes sure I'm not crying over storage space. But here's a twist. In October, the agency I work for handed me a refurbished MacBook Pro M1 Max 16 inches, which they snagged for only 2,100 euros from refurb.de. And no, this isn't sponsored, just sharing the love. And guess what? It does everything that my M3 Max did. Editing, effects, scrubbing timelines, even 4K exports. Sure, the M3 Max has more theoretical power, but when you're just cutting videos and adding transitions, you don't feel it. It's like buying a sports car for city traffic. Impressive on paper, but in practice, meh. The only time I notice the M1 Max hitting its limit is when I throw something monstrous at After Effects. But even then, those projects really belong on a desktop workstation. Fun fact, the M3 Max didn't solve that problem either, so we're back on square one. And here's where it gets awkward. Since the agency owns the Premiere Pro license, I always have access to the M1 Max. My M3 Max, meanwhile, sits in a drawer gathering dust. I haven't found scenarios where I need both laptops, no matter how hard I try. Why juggle two laptops when one does the job perfectly? I'm not building a NASA control center here. Also, the M1 Max 16 has a bigger screen. Sure, it's definitely heavier than the M3 Max 14, but we're comparing carrying water bottle and a slightly fuller water bottle. 1.6 versus 2 kilograms. Both are portable if you have a big backpack. My backpack can fit the laptop, the periphery, plus the gym stuff and lunch. I don't really care that big backpacks look ridiculous. I prefer to have all I want on me when I need it. And if I really need something lightweight, I'll just grab my wife's MacBook Air M1. It's fine as a typewriter when I'm on the go. So let's get real. If you're eyeing the best MacBook ever, ask yourself, do I really need this much power? If you're editing, doing design work, or running your side hustle, you might be fine with an older model. Refurbished Macs are incredible value. They come with warranties, and honestly, they just make more sense, unless you're someone who's editing blockbuster movies. And for those of you thinking, but I need the newest M4 Pro or M4 Max, let me remind you, you probably don't. Save your wallet some pain and look at refurbished options before you dive into the deep end. Follow for more brutally honest tech advice, because let's face it, there's no point in overbuying if your laptop ends up as a very expensive paperweight.